When you were first diagnosed, your endocrinologist likely told you, when you go low, you need 15 grams of sugar and wait 15 minutes. I'm gonna tell you why that's wrong and what you can do instead in today's episode. Let's get to our theme song. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type one diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right, so you all know this tale that we've heard as early diagnosed diabetics. We've got to eat the sugar wait some time and wait for that low to come back, right? If you're ever experiencing low blood sugar symptoms, you eat 15 grams of sugar, wait 15 minutes, the rule of 15 as it has been dubbed. But that's not always true, is it? Now you've probably noticed that there's sometimes you go low, you have a little bit of sugar and you get back to normal. Sometimes you go low, you have a lot of bit of sugar and nothing happens and you stay low. And there's a couple different factors you want to look at today. So what I want to share with you guys is that a couple days ago, uh, I was on a coaching call with a few of my uh, my higher level clients. We're going deeper into strategies, right? Diabetes, exercise, diet, mindset, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, where I teach them about my formula for stable and predictable blood sugars. And on that call, my pump started beeping at me. Dexcom alert: Low, you're going low. You're gonna go low. Treat some sugar. And uh, <laughs> it was nice because I got to be real with them. I got to say, hey, look, I am literally low right now. And I walked them through, you know, we're not 100% uh, perfect. We are never going to be perfect. No one is ever going to achieve 100% time and range 100% of the time, at least not while maintaining quality of life, right? And even if you were able to keep every single thing consistent forever, right? Your meal timing, the type of meal, your exercise, your sleep, your, your lack of social life, <laughs> you still can't uh, keep control over all of the variables, right? Your insulin could go bad. Your scar tissue could reduce the absorption of the insulin itself. If you're on a pump, maybe the pump side is bad. Maybe there's a, an occlusion, right? There's tons of different things that you have zero control over that could still impact blood sugars, shoot you out of range, even if it's for a minute, your 100% is gone, right? So we're not after perfection. What we're after is a mix of high quality of life and high control of blood sugars. We wanna mix those two together. You can have ultra control over blood sugars without quality of life, right? And you probably know my story. I've been there obsessing over blood sugars to an unhealthy level in my past. Uh, in my early years with diabetes, I also found that you can have a high quality of life without control over your blood sugars, right? You can ignore it and you can do whatever you want like I also did. Not a great way to go. You will feel sick. It will destroy the insides of your bodies. So instead, mix the high quality of life and high control of your blood sugars. That's the goal that we're after here. But what I showed, shared with my clients was as I was low, right? We can't be in control 100% of the time. That's okay. We got to let go of that. Let go of that perfectionist mindset. What I wanted to share with them was there's a reason that I'm not stopping the coaching call right now, right? I'm on with uh, about 10 of my clients and uh, I'm like, there's a reason I'm not just turn my video off and say, I'll be back in 15 minutes, right? I need to go treat this blood sugar uh, and drink like five juice boxes, right? And I walk them through the steps, the check boxes that I have mentally to walk through what type of low is this? You might be thinking, Matt, what do you mean what type of low? You're low, go eat sugar, right? But there's a difference. And the difference is this, you could have insulin on board impacting blood sugars, you could have recent activity, you could have current activity, you could have misbolused, right? If you didn't count your carbs correctly, took too much insulin. Uh, there's a number of different types of lows and the severity of the low itself will differ based on those variables. And when you look at these lows as a, a new perspective, a new option of, is it this kind of low, this kind of low, this kind of low, you can treat them appropriately. You're less likely to go to a low that's not significant, not severe, and treat with the entire kitchen. And then of course we know what? You end up at 400. That's no fun. Uh, and that's of course the, the start of the blood sugar roller coaster. Nobody wants to ride that ride. It's the one ride at Disneyland you don't want to go on. 
is the blood sugar roller coaster. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, it's when you go low, you overtreat, end up at 400, take a bunch of insulin because you're mad about the high, then you go low again and it's just up and down and up and down all day long. It's a roller coaster ride that nobody ever, ever wants to get on. And it's difficult to get off once you do hop on the blood sugar roller coaster. And so in order to avoid the blood sugar roller coaster, we have to look at different types of lows requiring different types of treatments. Okay, and this is where it gets uh, really interesting. So on that coaching call, I was in the 60s, okay? Uh, I looked over at them and I pulled this guy out. If you're watching the video, if you're on uh, the podcast, you won't know what I'm talking about. Glucose tabs, right? We all know that sound. Glucose tabs, I pulled out one glucose tab, a single glucose tab, and I started munching on it. I said, hold on guys, <laughs> I gotta treat this real quick. Gotta make sure I don't go super low during our call. And uh, after explaining to them, of course, that none of us are perfect, I explained the different types of lows. Now on this call, I had watched it go 90s to the 80s to the 70s to the 60s eventually, and I began the treating around 80s. I looked at it and go, okay, I'm probably gonna go low. Let's have one tablet, right? This is called micro-treating. It's a concept that I love to teach because we don't need the full 15 grams for every single type of low. It's, if it's a slow drop, Okay, and we're confident that it's not going to turn into a significant drop, then we're more likely to only require one glucose tab, uh, one Oreo, <laughs> maybe half of an Oreo, right? Uh, and because of that, you can avoid the overtreating, avoid skyrocketing past 200, past 300. And so when I got into the 70s, after treating in the 80s, right? Like, okay, maybe it's gonna be a little bit more of a drop than I expected. I've got two units of insulin on board, actually it's like 2.7 units still from breakfast. And uh, so I get into the 60s. And once I hit 60s, I was like, all right, we gotta go for a second tap, right? Hold on everybody, give me one second. I'm gonna munch on this tab while I'm answering your questions. And I remember at one point I said, uh, Bayless. We we're talking about insulin and which types of insulin, right? Basal, bolus, correction factors. And I said, uh, your Bayless insulin. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's my low talking. <laughs> Bayless is a combo of basil and bolus. <laughs> Everybody started cracking up. Uh, but I was still functioning, right? And this isn't to say that if you're in the 60s that you should just have one tab. That is in no way what I am trying to tell you today. What I'm telling you is that I was in the 60s, I was confident that it was not turning into a significant low. I was slanted down. And if I look at the trajectory of my blood sugars, while well, it did still say slanted down, which is what? about a four or five point decrease over the course of five minutes, one milligram per deciliter per minute, right? It's, it's dropping where I might have been in the 50s and then in the 40s if it went untreated, but I looked at it and went, okay, I had a glucose tab 10 minutes ago when I was in the 80s, that should be impacting me, right? The 15 minute rule does still apply. We're in the 60s now, I don't want to go any lower, but it does look like it's slowing down. The trajectory on my Dexcom shows that while it does still say slanted down, it looks like it's going to start leveling out. And I watch the numbers, so every five minutes it beeps, I laugh, they laugh, because <laughs> diabetes never stops, right? And as I'm watching the updates, it's going from 66, 63, huh, okay, that was only three points, not five, 62, ooh, we're starting to level out. 61, starting to level out again, right? Going down to one point every five minutes. That's really slow, that does not require two juice boxes to get out of that low if it's next to leveling out, for me at least. This is all my own experience, of course. This is not medical advice. But as I watch that closely, and I told them this too, I'm going to watch these numbers in front of you. I showed them my Dexcom screen, so look, it's starting to level out, right? As it levels out, we're likely to see a small rebound because we just had sugar. The sugar is still absorbing, and towards the end of the call, uh, if I get to a place that I like, I can add in something like proteins or fats to stabilize it, right? So I have glucose tabs that is pure sugar. Now, this low experience, having one tab, waiting 10 minutes, having a second tab, this is not how you should treat every low. Now, in that case, it worked out perfectly. I ended the call in the 90s. I loved it. They loved it. They got to watch me treat a low blood sugar in real time, and we got to discuss the impacts of different types of blood sugar. So it was a great topic to discuss. But outside of that, there have been other circumstances. And if you're on YouTube, if you watched, or if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel at FTF Warrior, uh, you know that I uploaded two other videos this last week that were unannounced. And they were more lifestyle, more experiential. Uh, one was a GoPro video of my whole family and I hiking through Big Bear. And I walked through 
the different decisions and habits that my sister and I made. My sister's also a type 1 diabetic. And we walked into uh, how we both started lower than we would like, right? I was uh, in the 70s all morning. And I was like, okay, well, if we're going for a hike, I should probably get out of the 70s, right? My sister, at the moment of leaving for the hike, had an arrow down at 83. Now you're gonna have to go watch that video uh, if you wanna go check it out. So go to FTF Warriors YouTube and, and go see recent videos. But uh, in those videos, we treated those lows very differently, right? She had arrowed down at 83. Did she have one glucose tablet? No, <laughs> absolutely not, because she's also going on a hike. She's going to incorporate activity. Activity can also cause a drop in blood sugars, and she was ready for that. So she went and stuffed her face, and I said, you might wanna stuff your face some more, because we're gonna go hiking. And so these different types of lows, like she wasn't even low yet. Now, if you've got double arrows down, you're in the 40s, 50s, 60s, that's when you stuff your face. That's when you got to watch out for what's going to happen next, right? You have to keep a close eye on the trajectory of the blood sugars. If you're dropping double arrows down, that means you're dropping at a very significant, significant pace. Uh, you're going to require fast sugar immediately. That's where, honestly, 15 grams might not be enough. Look at the surrounding variables. Do I have uh, an enormous amount of insulin on board? Did I just wrap up an hour long run? Am I in the middle of an hour long run? What's going on around me that might cause my blood sugars to drop even faster or continue on the pace that they're at? That low is going to be treated very differently than zero insulin on board, hanging out on the couch, watching a movie, and you're sitting at 68, right? Yes, technically you are low. You're below 70 milligrams per deciliter but you only require one, maybe two glucose tabs, right? We can anticipate one glucose tab raising us just enough to get out of that low blood sugar. We don't need the 15 grams, okay? A lot of people go for that because they like the sugar. Uh, maybe they hate being low. That's the place that I used to be in. I used to get real nervous around low blood sugars. And I'll tell you, uh, not many people know <laughs> that the lowest you can, or it's not the lowest, the highest you can set your Dexcom low alert is 100, right? Because most people look at a low blood sugar and go, yeah, low is like 70, maybe 80. Some people have it set at 60 when it starts to alarm them, right? I found out because I had low anxiety years ago that the lowest or the highest, I keep mixing that up, the highest low threshold that you could have set for your alarm to go off to warn you that you're going to be low is 100. And I was mad. I was like, why isn't it 120, 130? I want the early alert system so I can know before I go low. And of course, now my low alerts are set at 80. because That's enough of a warning for me. If I get alerted at 80, I can catch it before it goes below 70 or 60 uh, most of the time. But what we're looking at is if you're starting to see a fast drop and the external variables, exercise, the last type of your meal, the insulin on board, all these other factors are going to make you think you're going to keep dropping fast or that the drop speed is going to increase. Maybe you're slanted down now, but you know it's about to hit arrow down, right? If you're mid run, you gotta watch out for that. Where do you expect the trajectory to go? How can you counteract that with your low treatment? And on the other side of the spectrum, again, if it is arrow down, let's say it's going arrow down at 85 and then arrow down at 83. Well, that's not arrow down anymore, is it? I mean, Dexcom's catching up. And it's soon going to say slanted down. Soon it might say leveled out. You might level out by 80. So if you see arrow down at 85, looking at the traje trajectory, I'm having trouble, trouble speaking. Wow, I got to slow down for a second. If you notice the trajectory of your blood sugars does not match the arrows on your CGM, take that into consideration. Okay, arrow down 85, and then the next number is arrow down 83. That is not arrow down anymore. Keep an eye on it. You probably want to treat with something, but you might not eat, need to eat the whole kitchen, right? Versus if you are slanted down and uh, let's say slanted down at 90, next one shows slanted down at 80. Well, that's an arrow down. It's about to update, right? It's, it's in between updates. So keep an eye on where you expect your blood sugars to go, especially if you can map out external circumstances that are going to impact the trajectory of your blood sugars, okay? Like I mentioned, like five times, because it's super important. Exercise, we'll also get into the type of exercise. Type of exercise can massively impact blood sugars. Uh, your meal timing, pre-bolus timing, 
the type of meal, your existing insulin on board. Did you give a correction recently? Is it just now starting to pick up and affect your blood sugars, right? Peak of insulin is not at the moment of injection. There's a lot of stuff you got to take into consideration here. So every low is going to be different. Every low requires you to approach it from a strategic position. What type of low is this? Is it fast dropping? Is it a slow drop? Am I stable? but technically low, right? That 68, but totally flat. Maybe you don't treat, maybe you have a little treat. It's going to differ based on your own personal preferences, what your doctor has told you to treat, what zone they're having you aim for, but every low can and should be treated differently based on external circumstances, based on existing data points that you have. And when you understand that, you can avoid those massive blood sugar roller coasters. You can avoid the massive drops. If you got double arrows down at 60, you should probably eat more than one glucose tab, right? And I'm saying probably because this is not medical advice. This is me sharing what I've learned over the years with you that if you treat your alos all the same, you're going to run into uh, certain circumstances that are very frustrating. You're going to run into stories like mine where I would treat a low at 70 and end up somehow at 350. Right? That's not where you want to be. You want to treat your low, get back into a comfortable position with a healthy blood sugar that you can continue on with your day with. You don't want to have to deal with this for hours and hours and hours on end as you chase the high and then recorrect and then go back into a low and then chase the high. You don't want to deal with that. Step off the blood sugar roller coaster. Use the strategy of micro treating, right? One glucose tab before you're actually low can help slow any drop. Two glucose tabs, gonna slow it even more, might balance you up a little bit, right? A couple different strategies you can use there. And obviously, this is one micro piece of the puzzle. You wanna focus on bigger pieces as well, like what does exercise in general do to my blood sugars? How should I eat as a type 1 diabetic? How can I re manipulate my blood sugars based on external variables? And how can insulin sensitivity impact me over days, right? There's so many other factors to consider. But this one strategy will help you to step off of the blood sugar roller coaster, not have to worry about the rebound spikes that can and likely will ruin half of your day and keep your blood sugars in range for longer periods of time. All right, so uh, core concept of today, not all lows are the same. Look for the trajectory of where you expect your blood sugars to go, taking into consideration the external variables. Did I exercise recently? When was my last injection? Do I have insulin on board? Tons of stuff that you can pull into that as external data to make better decisions. The more data you have, the more informed your decisions are, the more likely you are to see success. Data is your friend, and it always will be. All right, so um, if you enjoy that formula-driven style of approach, looking at more than just your current blood sugar, looking at the trajectory of where it's going to go, collecting data to make your life with diabetes easier, believe it or not, the more you micromanage the prep for your diabetes, the easier it is to control over the long term because it tends to run itself in the background smoothly. So you don't get surprised with those 350s, those 40s, nobody likes that. Micromanage your diabetes up front so that it runs itself a bit smoother. All right, if that's the kind of stuff you appreciate, highly recommend going to check out the training that I did recently at diabetesinaction.com. This is only for you if you're looking to understand your diabetes at a deeper level. If you're looking to sit back and ignore it, do not watch this training. It's going to overwhelm you. You're not going to take anything away from it because I'm going to tell you things that you can do to improve your blood sugars, which yeah, I did say things you can do, not things you can listen to and then forget. These are action items. You must be action oriented if you expect to see results. They're not just going to happen for you. You have to put the work in if you want those results. So if you're the kind of person that is willing to put the work in, be actionable, then go to that training, diabetesinaction.com. I'll see you over there. Find out how you can uh, approach these lows in a different sense, right? Not all lows are the same. What are the variables that are impacting my lows? Do I need the full 15 grams? Do I need 25? Do I need one glucose tablet? That's going to be up to you. Use your understanding and your data points and the trajectory of your blood sugars to determine how to treat your lows. And I'll see you over at the training at diabetesinaction.com. Have an awesome day. That's all I got for you guys. And keep up the fight.